June 6, 1944, Normandy, France. The 2nd Ranger Battalion is about to embark on their mission of scaling the daunting 100-foot cliffs of Point du Hoc. As they load the carrier ships, a colonel walks past, shaking hands and wishing Godspeed to the men of the battalion, many of whom would not survive the assault. That man is James Earl Rudder, a resolute commander from small-town Texas. A natural and charismatic leader, Rudder instilled confidence in his men that day, just as he would inspire others for the rest of his life. On D-Day, and every other day, Rudder comforted those around him with his personal mantra, Stick with me. From the battlefields of World War II, to the Texas state government, and finally to his efforts as president of Texas A&M University, James Earl Rudder took a stand for the fundamental ideals of freedom and democracy. For those who knew him, Stick with me promised more than personal security. It represented Rudder's commitment to equality and justice. James Earl Rudder was born on May 6, 1910, in a small town in West Texas called Eden. Rudder's humble origins greatly impacted his later life, and no person had a greater influence on him than his mother. His mother shaped his values and many of his best traits. Loyalty, faith, and compassion all came from her. The Rudder family grew up in rugged isolation. With an outdoor bathroom, no refrigeration, and no electricity until Earl was 15, the six Rudder children learned the values of hard work and teamwork at a young age. This, along with Earl's passion for football, instilled a motivation within him that would drive him to do great things. Earl would attend college at Tarleton on a football scholarship, and it was here where he met several formative influences in his life. There he encountered the president of the college, a very erudite man by the name of J. Thomas Davis. And J. Thomas Davis in many ways would become a model for Rudder as the public servant. And the other person at Tarleton who had a strong influence on Rudder throughout his life was the famous basketball coach whose name was W.J. Wisdom. Coach Wisdom had a quote by Grantland Rice hanging in the locker room that stuck with Rudder for the rest of his life. For when one great scorer comes to mark against your name, he writes not that you won or lost, but how you played the game. In 1930, Rudder transferred into Texas A&M, an all-white, all-male college at the time. He played football, and after graduating, he returned to West Texas to coach at Brady High School and later Tarleton College. During this time, Rudder had remained active in the Army Reserve, a requirement for graduates of A&M. When the United States went to war in 1941, his training officers immediately recognized him as a leader. When the newly formed 2nd Ranger Battalion was assembled, he was selected as its commander. This battalion proved his worth as a strong and effective leader. He led his battalion through training stateside and overseas in Britain. This all culminated in June of 1944 when Rudder's Rangers scaled the cliffs of Point du Hoc. It was what General Omar N. Bradley was later to describe as the most difficult assignment he had ever given a soldier in his military career. Rudder's Rangers were instrumental in the success of the Normandy campaign, and their legacy is forever solidified in the cliffs of northern France. When I think of, uh, of Rudder and the kind of courage that he manifests at Pointe du Hoc, it really is of two kinds. There's a physical courage and there's moral courage. The physical courage is the willingness to risk your life, to expose, expose yourself to danger. Physical courage was required of Rudder. The other thing was moral courage, the willingness to confront the mission he had been, that he had been assigned. Rudder's courage carried him through the war. He commanded the 109th Infantry Regiment at the Battle of the Bulge with great skill. Rudder himself was awarded the Silver Star for his efforts. His war accolades will always be remembered, but it was after the war that James Earl Rudder would start his true rise to prominence. After returning to Texas, Rudder continued to build a life with his wife, Margaret, and his five children. He was reluctantly led into a short but successful political career. He served as the mayor of Brady for two terms and later as the Texas Land Commissioner from 1955 to 1958. 
During this time, Rudder and Senator Lyndon B. Johnson became close friends, and this relationship would continue for the rest of their lives. Johnson admired Rudder's honesty and commitment to his values, even in the face of the most powerful person in America. My favorite story that Mother used to tell about LBJ was when they would go to Washington and spend the night in the White House, President Johnson would walk in the bedroom early in the morning in his pajamas and say, Margaret, would you do something about this husband of yours? He said, I can tell anybody in the United States what to do, and they'll do it except for him. His attitude, coupled with his staunch moral values, set him apart from others. In 1957, Rudder agreed to step down as Texas Land Commissioner to serve as Vice President of Texas A&M. His official statement on the matter read, I leave the General Land Office to become Vice President of Texas A&M College, where I believe I can be of greatest service to my state and nation. To no one's surprise, he was elevated to the title of President in 1959. President Rudder had several items on his immediate agenda. The college was in deplorable condition, and he knew Texas A&M had no hope to thrive in the future if he didn't fix several problems. These included the requirement of military training for all students and the all-white, all-male student body. Rudder got rid of mandatory military training, but his desire to integrate and open A&M to women was more controversial. The idea of modernizing A&M angered many students who believed that the male military tradition were central to its identity. However, as an old army Aggie himself, Rudder was not scared to fight for his vision of the college as a more open, diverse place. It wasn't long before the students and student leaders hung him in effigy in front of his home here on campus, and he went out on the porch and told them that they were in error and that if they needed to fight, that the, the fat president would be in the front lines to fight the, about this issue. Butter's commitment to his values paid off and by the time of his death in 1970, Texas A&M had been transformed from a small college stuck on old habits to a modern university that embraced both equality and tradition. Today, Texas A&M has a diverse student body of more than 60,000 people, more than half of whom would not be able to be there if Rudder had not taken a stand. In January of 1970, Rudder went to the doctor for a headache that would turn out to be a cerebral hemorrhage. On Monday, March 23rd at 5.10 p.m., James Earl Rudder drew his final breath. His funeral would be attended by former President Johnson, along with 5,000 mourners. Rather than being buried at Arlington National Cemetery, he chose to be buried in College Station. His memory has been preserved throughout Texas, the United States, and the world. Rudder led an extraordinary life but he should be remembered most for his care and compassion for others. James Earl Rudder's stand for justice was firm but also full of empathy. Rudder himself put it best in a letter he wrote to the mother of a deceased ranger in the month after D-Day. Dear Mrs. Caperton, No commanding officer can ever find words to adequately express his deep sympathy with those whose sons, husbands, or brothers finished their earthly tour of duty while under his command. The mission of the rangers was successfully accomplished, but as with all worthwhile things, the cost was so great, so great indeed, that it cost the life you cherished and lost us a comrade and friend. So our comrade is gone, and we realize that there is a void in your heart which neither your country's gratitude nor our sympathy can fill. We, with whom he shared his life, ask only now to share his memory that it may inspire us all to the gaining of an early victory and the making of a lasting peace. With deepest sympathy, James E. Rudder. Rudder stuck with his men until the end, and his legacy continues to stick with all of those for whom he took a stand. <laughs>